right, Joey, so why are we here today? We're going to make some beer today. All right, so this is a beer kit from Craft a Beer, which is going to be a brown ale. So let us start it off by opening this up. Now, just so you know, I did open this beforehand because I wanted to make sure that everything was actually in the kit before I've gotten some kits and opened it up and noticed that things like grains were missing. So within this kit, this is the one gallon. We got the one gallon carboy. We have a funnel, the racking cane, the malt extract, and a cool little bag. Let's see what's in here. So here's the grains, a little cheese sock condom, some sanitizer, an airlock, it's a three piece one, a stopper or a bung as some people call it, the hops, they're bittering hops, and the yeast for the end for when we pitch it. The thermometer, comes with a glass one, so be careful when you store it, you don't want to break it. All right, so that's what comes with it. Um, so I've done probably about five different kits so far, and I just want to kind of bring over some stuff that I've purchased outside of the kit that has made things a lot easier. This is a siphon. So if this is your first time, once you start getting to the bottling phase, and you're actually transferring the beer into the bottles, when it comes, you'll see the racking cane that it comes with here. You essentially connect it to a tube. And I've done this four different times, pain in the ass. So I finally spent like the 20 bucks, bought one of those. It makes your life a lot easier. Highly recommended, but not necessary. Next thing, a bigger funnel. That will make things a bit easier for when you're straining out your hops. So highly recommended. And then a mesh strainer. So depending on the brew kit that you're doing, you could A, if you're doing an extract one, you won't have to really worry about it because you won't be mashing in your grains. But either way, you still got to put the hops in. And when you're straining that, you don't want the leftover stuff sitting in someone's beer. Then something that's usually around the house, a little spray bottle. This will be great for when you're sanitizing and you don't want to throw your stuff into a bucket every other few minutes. Here's some easy clean. I picked this up. A lot of times um, there's a little debate whether or not you need this. I prefer to use this because the other route is using soap. And if you use that, that has the potential of making your beer taste a little off. So if you want to spend the extra money to do it, go for it, but it's not necessary. Now this guy is necessary. This is the sanitizer. You want to make sure to use this. If you get one thing out of this video, make sure you're using this. If you don't sanitize, your beer is going to get in can get infected and it's going to taste like shit. So you don't want that. And who's that by? Starsan. Starsan. And then for me, a digital thermometer. The glass works fine, but i rather just use this. It's easier to use, it's easier to clean, and I don't have to worry about it breaking like the glass. And this does not come with a kit, but if you're planning on doing the bottling, make sure you pick up this, some bottles, and some, I don't think I actually have the caps over here, but you get the idea. Last but not least, this is the newest thing I bought. I've actually had not had the chance to use it, but this is actually for bottling the beer. So in theory, you drop this in the bottle, it pours out, you pull it up, it's a perfect pour every time into the beer. So you don't have to worry about getting the sizes correct. All right, and that's all the tools that I got. So you want to get moving on to cleaning the equipment and then doing some sanitizing so we can start the brew. Yep. All right. Let's do it, man. Let's do this. All, All right, right, Joey. So what's the next step? So we are going to start cleaning. All right. So like I said before, we're actually using the easy clean 
And with the Easy Clean, it's going to be one gallon of water with a tablespoon, one tablespoon of the Easy Clean. Okay, so we're going to be cleaning what? The spatula, the tubing, the mesh strainer, the funnel, and this is what we're going to be putting the cleaner in. Okay. And then let um, the one gallon carboy, the stock pot, which we'll be brewing with, and the sprayer, which we'll throw our sanitizer in, like I said before, to make sure that it's easy and available so that we don't have to mess with putting the stuff back into the sanitizer. We just and, keep it moving. And don't forget to bring a towel. Yep. Always bring a towel. Always this stuff towel. starts to get messy. Um, I don't know what your countertops are made of. This shouldn't really ruin anything, but why take the chance? All right, let's do it. All righty, let's go. All right, so what's the next step? All right, so the next step is the sanitizer. With the kit, it does come with this, and as it mentions that you'll be using half the packet per gallon of water, but make sure to save the other half for when you're actually doing the bottling. So that's what it came with, but that is not what we're using today because we are gonna go ahead and use the star sand. For this mix, it's going to take one gallon of water and 1.2 teaspoons of this. So over here, just so you don't get confused, this is half. So you'll see Joey mix in two of these and then just a little bit of extra of the other ones. Alright Joey, so as you noticed, it looks like our mix was a little bit off. We got a little too much suds. So I guess in the future it's just more play around until you find the perfect amount that you need between water and the cleaner. But luckily, if you guys are using this, which came with the kit, they've already done this a thousand times testing, so this should work with no issue. Okay, so probably instead of like pouring it in there, like we did last time, it would probably just be better to just spray yeah, it. Yeah, give it a quick spray inside and then just tip it upside down. Now they say that it should be fine, that you don't need to rinse it. It's a no rinse, so it should be good, but I'm just keeping it upside down just to help with whatever is left over to get out. Okay. All righty, so with that being said, we finished the sanitizing and we're going to be moving on to the brewing. Okay. Now, with the brewing, Joey, do you know what the four minimum ingredients you need to actually make a brew? So we need water, grain, yeast, and hops. That is right. That, that is the four basic ingredients that you need to actually make beer. So let's get that started in a few moments. All right, so what's the next step? All right, so the next step for getting this brewing process is to start boiling the water. Now, I chose to use some spring water, which I bought from the store. You can use tap water, but from the research that I've done, um, a lot of brewers feel that grabbing it straight off the tap, if your city has older pipes, it might make the flavor off. So I just went ahead and bought a couple of gallons of this just because they're pretty cheap. So just so you're aware, 
I've already poured in one gallon in here because the process takes a while to heat up to that 155 that we're looking for. And I didn't want to do another useless montage of water just boiling. So Joey, if you could go ahead and pour in a little bit more water. And Joey, can you kind of explain why we're pouring a little bit more than a gallon in? Uh, well, the reason why is because water evaporates. And we want it as close as possible to a gallon at, in the end pro at, at the end product. Yep, exactly. So let's get this back on the burner. Um, Joey, you start setting that up. Let me check the temperature really quick. So what we're aiming for is about 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, Joey is going to start putting in the malts into the cheese condom, a.k.a. the brewer's do-rag. So, Joey, can you kind of explain what is the purpose of those? So we're going to put the specialty malt into the, the cheese rag. And the reason why, uh, we're going to be, once the water gets up temperature, we're going to dip this in there, just like, uh, like making tea. And uh, it's to, uh, for flavor, color, and to extract some of the sugars. And you always want to make sure you use specialty malts because they do not have starch. And just to expand on that a little bit more, you only want to do that if you are doing a abstract beer. Normally, if you're doing a uh, full grain, you would be you would not be steeping. And for this brew kit, it is using um, malt extract, so that is why we're doing the steeping. It smells like tea and cereal. <laughs> yes. So right now, as I stated, we want it about to be 155. Now we were hitting about 160 before, but now that we added in cold water, we're about 145. So we'll let that sit for a couple more minutes while he's getting that together. So normally you want to expand the bag first like this, kind of stretch it out a little bit so that you have a little bit more room to play with. Think of it like a balloon when you're filling it with water. You kind of like mess with the top to it and you throw this in. Yep. Is that it? Yep, All right. It's the whole bag, yep. So we'll give this a quick tie. My cat is actually very curious. She can see us messing with this. She probably wants to play with it. So. She probably heard the bag and thinks it's food. Yeah, she probably she probably <laughs> thinks it's the catnip. Yeah. So let's give this one more. Joey, can you actually hand me the sanitizer? Sure. Can. It's right there. So this is kind of what I was speaking towards earlier, where the reason why you would want a little spray bottle with the sanitizer, anytime you interact with the brew you will want to spray your stuff down so we're just about right there which will be fine so what we're going to go ahead and do we're going to throw this in we're going to jump it up and down a couple times just like you would do with your tea and then we'll set it aside for about 15 to 20 minutes I would recommend if you have clips, unfortunately I did not pull any out, so if you grab one of those it will actually make it a bit easier and I'm just going to use a toothpick, put it through the cloth, let it sit there so that you do not have to worry about it dropping in. There is no reason why you can't allow it to drop in, it's just more of a pain to pull it back out. You get, you get the tongs, clean it, then pull it. So. We'll let that sit for 20 minutes and then we'll move on to the next step. Now we're ready to remove the grains. And we just kind of let that drain out a little bit. And we're not going to squeeze this because we don't want any more tannins in there. Exactly. That might mess with the flavor. Oh, you hear that? Mm -hmm. That's the stove top. <laughs> now, one thing to note. Um, which we didn't mention before. I have an electric stove, so it's really hard to temperature control. So you just wanna check every couple minutes to make sure you're not going over that 155 mark um, mm -hmm. as you're doing the ste 
steeping. So we were doing like heat on, heat off, you know, throughout exactly. the process. Yeah. Yep. Know, just making sure it stays at that 155 temperature at, at, at all times. So don't worry if it goes a little bit over, but you know, once a stove top for an electric stove's hot and it hits that like 170, it's going to take a while to cool down. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to walk away and then it's starting to boil. For the next step, we're actually keeping it back on here now that we've taken off the grains and we want it to get to a boil, which is at... Uh, it was 212. 212? Yeah. Yep. So we're going to let this sit here for a few minutes. So once again, now that this is going to hit with here, we're going to give it a quick spray. And like I said, most people say that it's not necessary because it's already going to get to that boil point, but... You know, if you should always practice sanitation no matter what. If it's always on your mind, you're going to mess up less. So let's see. So we're hitting about 160 now. So I guess we'll give that a quick pause and we'll let this sit until we get to that temperature that we're aiming for. So before we finish the steeping, and now we've allowed this to get up to the boil, which is? It has to be at 212. Yep. So we're set at that temperature, and now we're going to get ready for the dry malt extract. And so what is a, a malt extract, Mike? All right. So essentially, there's a couple of ways when you're brewing. There's one that you're using full grain or you're using the extract. We're not doing the full grain because that's not what this kit provided. So essentially when you do the other one, which would be just the full grain, you would throw your grains within a pot and then you would let it sit to a boil, which then would bring it down to like an oatmeal, oatmeal consistency. And from there, you would get a second pot, you would strain it, and then within the strainer you would get left with all the malt, or sorry, not the malt, but the grain. And then from that grain, you grab another pot, you would take what you have that you strained with, and you would pour it back over the liquid that's within the pot, and then you would grab whatever extra sugars that you can gain from the grain. Gain from the grain. Okay. So once that is done, they take all that and they make it into a powdered form, which you could kind of think of it as a powdered milk. And that's what this equals to, which then cuts out that whole process. Um, if this is your first time, you don't really have to worry about it. You know, if you've done full grain in the past, you know it's kind of a pain in the ass to do. So it kind of cuts that part out. You kind of cheat, go to this, and you can do it. So one thing we did not mention that this is actually what we would call the wort. And what the wort is, is the unfermented beer. So what we're going to do now, we're going to cut this open. All right. As he's going to pour this in, we're going to, hold on, he's done. Um, we're going to give this a quick spray because as always, we want to take our stuff that we're mi mis mixing with the beer. We want to sanitize or our brew. Give it a quick spray there. There we go. And we want to actually remove it from the burner. So he's gonna do this slowly. Now one thing to keep in mind, as we're doing this, we want to continuously stir. We don't want any clumps and we don't want it to stick to the bottom. So something to keep in mind, don't keep this in the way. As you can see, it kind of stuck to the side, but that's fine. We'll do a kick. So 
apply, have it drop in, and as you can see that was clumping. So once again, you want to make sure you're continuously stirring. Even with like the heat and like the yep. contact with the heat on the bag, it's starting to clump up. Exactly. Wow. All right. So That's... I'm gonna stir that for a couple minutes off the burner. So I just want to kind of go back into what I was saying with when you're actually using the full grain. Um, the process of that is actually called mashing. You would mash in and that's the point where you throw your grains in and that's when you kind of want it to be that oatmeal like substance. As I was referencing where you would actually take what was in the pot and pour it over those grains, that is the, that is the sparge? sparge. Sparge. Yep. So this is starting to look good. Start to smell the flavors of what your beer is actually like, mm -hmm. which is good. Mm -hmm. Kind of hit the bottom to make sure there's nothing sticking. Go back and forth. And this is kind of the point where you can see things starting to come together. For this recipe, the hops that it came with. So these are the Fuggle. Fuggle? Fuggle? Fuggle. Fuggle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Muggle. <laughs> um, <laughs> But these are bittering. These are bittering hops. There's a there is a bunch of different hops. But for this recipe that came with the kit, it requires can I get the scissors please? Sure you can. To be added before we start the 60 minute boil. Give those a quick smell. What do you think? Okay. And this is actually my favorite part, is when we pour these in and you get that really hoppy smell. So we'll dump a few in. If you want to get that a quick stir. Sure. Now something to note, as we're mixing these in, you might be like, well, as they start to come apart, what do you do? as you're trying to bottle your beer later, or throw them back into the carboy later on. So essentially, that was the point of having the strainer, the mesh strainer. And you'll see that a little more in detail once this, yeah, you smell that? Yeah. Once this actually starts going through. So we're gonna throw in the second half of it and let him mix it for a little bit. So once you actually have that in and it sits, you know, you get that nice stir in, this will sit for 60 minutes. So after an hour, um, that's when we'll start getting to our next part for giving it an ice bath, essentially. Okay, so now that our wort has sat here, boiling for an hour, we're actually gonna go give it an ice bath so that we can cool it down to 75. Once it's down to about 75 degrees, we'll be able to pitch the yeast. So Joey, if you can bring that over. Sure can. All right. Yep. And get that in and hold it down. There you go. And let me, now that we're done with the stove top, I can turn that off. Let me get this here. Actually, what you want to give it a quick spray with the sanitizer. And as it sits in there. So right now, it was about 212 and it's already dropping to about 190. It's, it's actually fluctuating right now. So we want to make sure to kind of sit there and let it naturally drop. All right, so now that we cooled our wart down to a cool temperature of 75 degrees, we're going to strain it 
and get rid of the extra particles from the hobs. So first, as always, we want to make sure that we're sanitizing the gear that we're using. So let's start with the strainer. Then we'll go with the funnel, kind of hit this guy here because it's going into the carboy. Give this a spray around and even a quick spray in there and you know, give it a shake. There we go. All right, so now that we did that, we'll get the strainer in there and hopefully Joey can do this without burning me. So let's give this a go. Now let's turn it all the way. Oh, keep going? Yep. Let's just get the rest. There we go. Cool. Okay. Oh, it's gonna pour over, so let's let's let it sit for a second. That's okay. We got a little bit of foam there, but as you can see, this is the importance of having the strainer. You definitely don't want that going in there, because later on, there's a chance someone might be drinking that, and that doesn't sound like a good idea. Okay, so the next part that we want to do is add the yeast. We're gonna use the yeast that was provided by the kit. And this is asking us to add the actual whole package. Now, there's a lot of different yeast out there, but for this demonstration, we'll just go with what was provided. So once we throw that in there, which is called pitching the yeast, we're gonna shake the carboy for about a minute. And that will allow oxygen to come in here, which will then allow the yeast to multiply, which then we call that process aeration. Now you don't want to go past a minute um, because that will then become oxidation which will then mess with the flavor of the beer. So you don't want to do that. So let's get this process started by giving this a quick cut. Maybe give it a little bit more than a quick cut. <laughs> I feel like I'm opening Kool-Aid from when I was a kid. <laughs> You gotta just get it just right. So we pour this guy in. A. There we go. Joey, do you want to put your palm over there? Give it a quick shake. A palm? Yep. So what we're gonna do is put in one minute. And just shake it. For yep. A Give it a good shake for one whole minute. So while Joey's doing that, I'm going to start cleaning off the tubing, which is then connected to this top. Now with this kit, it's gonna be a little bit different. We actually got one of these stoppers, or bongs as other people call it. So as always, just make sure you get this a quick spray, and then we're gonna give this a spray. There you go, even inside the tube, give it a Good spray, as you, you can see that it's actually going in the tube. We'll go a little this way, a little that way. There we go. There we go. Got a minute? That's a whole minute already. Let's throw that back down, the man. All right. So now we're gonna, so you can let go. Okay. So I'll we're gonna the set the blow off assembly. Like I said, with the kit, you were given this. Kind of the same idea. I find the cap a little bit easier with something I've already purchased. And we'll throw it in here. And there you go. We want to set that in here. Now the purpose of this, as this is fermenting within the next three days, that this will let the CO2 out. So normally, if someone just jumps the gun, throw this on, if this thing blows off, then your beer is exposed. And once it's exposed, you could get germs in there. And that's definitely something you don't want. So we got that. What we're going to do, if you have a jar, use it. 
If you don't, you can also grab a cup, you can grab a little bowl, just something that you can spray. And just a quick spray. We're gonna use the rest of the sanitizer. Don't get that launch left. Grab a little bit of water with it. Throw it in. And throw this in. So the CO2 is going to release into here, and we're going to let that sit for three days. During that three day process, as I mentioned, you're going to see the fermentation. It's going to move around a little bit. So it's kind of cool to watch just come in, you know, after a day or two, and you could definitely see that. Uh, you'll know your yeast is actually doing something if you see bubbles start populating in here. So just give that a look. And then once that process is done after 72 hours, you can go ahead, fill this guy up. Um, some people like to use cheap vodka, just either that or a little bit, if you save some sanitizer left, throw it in there. So that way, if anything goes in there, it, it's good to go. So you'll essentially pull this off, if you're using this, you can switch over, put this in, boom, there you go. And it's the same process. You'll see the bubbling in there. Now, the good thing with this, if you see, you know, a lot of times you'll put it in a cooler place, that might mean, hey, maybe a little bug's crawling around. It goes in there. You have something like this. It's protected by water. It's not going to get into your beer. So you keep that in. You put this on after three days, and then after that, you'll let it sit for two weeks. And once that two weeks is up, hey, the fun part is we'll come back and we'll show you how to bottle it all. And then after that bottling process is done, you'll let it sit for another two weeks, and you get to drink your beer. Sweet. So thank you for anybody that's watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. Please hit that subscribe button. That's going to help us grow hit that like if there's something that we said that was wrong let us know you know him and i even though i've done a few i we're still amateurs this is actually joey's first one so we would love to hear any feedback anything that could help us improve we can only get better so thank you so much thanks guys